Hey guys, this is QA Shahin and this is the second video in our Docker video series and in this video we're going to install Docker for Windows. So we're going to install Docker on Windows and we're going to have to discuss some caveats around that and then we're actually going to try to run a hello world example in Docker just to confirm that our Docker installation is complete and that it is working. If you wish to follow the blog post for this video, then you can do so by clicking on this link and that will take you to a blog post which will contain all the relevant links that we're going to discuss in this video anyway. So, we're going to install Docker on Windows. Now, when we start thinking about Windows, there are some requirements, sadly. First of all, you need to have Windows 10 Professional or Enterprise 64-bit. But if you don't really have that, then there is a good chance you might be able to get around by installing the Docker Toolbox instead. So what does the installation actually include? So once you install Docker, you'll get a couple of things. You'll get a terminal which will allow you to have access to Docker. You will get a, another tool called Kitematics, and that is basically a GUI interface to using Docker to pull and post images, which we'll talk about um, in a future video. Uh, but most importantly, you'll, you'll get the whole Docker thing. You'll basically get everything that you need through a single installation. So let's go ahead and actually try to install Docker on Windows. So to install Docker on Windows, you just follow this link here and we'll follow some more instructions once we get to that. Okay, so I am just going to say get Docker for Windows and then I'm going to say download from the Docker store. And when I'm here, I am going to assume that not everyone has Windows 10 Professional and I'm going to assume for the moment that not everyone has the full requirements. So to try and sort of satisfy everyone's kind of need in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and install Docker Toolbox instead. So I'm just going to let this file download. Okay, so it looks like the download is completed. I'm just going to go to the folder itself and I'm just going to run the exe. Okay, so here you get to the Docker wizard. So let's go ahead and just go through this really quickly. So I'm going to say next, the location I'm okay with. Um, now I want to install the Docker Compose, so make sure that you have this selected. VirtualBox is also selected, and Kitematic is also selected. So really quickly, what are these? Docker Compose is something we're going to look at in a future video. This is an exceptionally powerful tool that allows you to orchestrate multiple container management. VirtualBox is something you need. This is something that Docker will spin up every time it tries to virtualize on Windows. So this is sort of the caveat of having VirtualBox on a Windows. And Kitematic is a GUI interface to upload and download images from the Docker Hub. So just say next. And I'm okay with all of this stuff. Say next. Uh, install. And just wait for the installation to finish. Okay, so it looks like the installation has finished. So I'm going to tick this so that the shortcuts open in a file explorer. And what you now should have is both the Docker quick start terminal and the Kitematic. So let's go ahead and start up the Docker quick start terminal. So once you've started this up, this is actually gonna start creating a virtual machine a couple of things to help you get to that point. So let me see if I could really quickly just increase the font size on this. Now, when we start thinking about Docker and Windows, like I said, one of the few things it needs to do, and this could take a while, is it starts our VirtualBox, 
it starts up a VM in VirtualBox and this acts as a almost a cloud system running something locally on your machine which then allows you to fire up images of containers which are then containerized in Docker. So once this is done at some point you're going to get a very lovely message of a whale that looks very cute and once we have that we should then be able to start using Docker. So I'm just going to fast forward to that bit in the video and we'll take you from there. Okay, so it looks like we're done. Great stuff. So what is this showing? So it's showing us the IP of my machine locally. So your IP will look similar to something like this. It'll be 192.168 and then something, something. Um, this will come in handy later on in the series, but don't worry, we'll be able to get this at any point anyway. Now, one of the first things we'd like to do is quickly check the version of Docker. So if you say Docker, minus V this should now give you the version of Docker now if you're seeing this then congratulations you've actually installed Docker because you're now able to get a version now just before we decide to finish off this video let's run one more command I'd like you to run Docker run hello dash world okay so what has happened here now we said docker run hello world we're going to go into detail what each of this stuff means but for the moment what's basically happened is this when we said docker run hello world it actually went up to the docker hub it then found an image called hello world it then pulled it down to your machine it then ran it locally and this is basically a message confirming all of that so if you're seeing a message that looks very similar to this then congratulations you've literally just run your very first image in docker in a containerized format and you now actually have Docker up and running on your machine. Well done. So we did the installation and we also ran an example of seeing how Docker works. We simply did a quick version check and then we run a hello world example. So what have we done in this video? Well, we've actually done something very important. We finally installed Docker on our machine and it was a substantially large installation, but the benefit is that it was a single installation as opposed to installing different things in different places. In other words, we've installed Docker and the only thing we really need to actually get started is the terminal, which comes as part of that installation. We then checked the version of Docker, which gave us confirmation that Docker was up and running. And finally, we actually pulled a hello world image from the Docker Hub and we ran that locally as a container. And that came back with a message essentially confirming that we now have Docker up and running. So that's really it for this video. In the next video, we're going to actually start thinking a little bit more about containers in a little bit more detail and seeing what sort of power Docker can give us when it comes to pulling images and running them. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.